Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that I like to use when I write JavaScript code, basically. So let's get into it. Now, one of the major problems that I argue that we have both on the server when you're doing Node.js development and in the browser is that you kind of fail to know what type of information that you're getting for the application that you're building. One thing that I think is sorely missing in, especially in when you're doing things in the browser, and that's kind of, I, I think that this is a big mistake that a lot of developers do when they work with the, with the browser, and that is that you look at the, the server response. So when you're building your Angular application, your Vue application, your Rayleigh really application, your React application, whatever you're building, right? And you're getting that JSON payload to your page. What a lot of developers will do is that they will treat that response as the source of truth. They will trust what's coming from the server to the client and they will simply use the shape of that information in order to then create their application. And I think that this is a big mistake. I think that what you should be doing is to have the same mentality as the server has about things that are coming from the client. Because any server-side developer will tell you that they will always validate and they will always create a model on the server that the the request from the client or the like the client request has to abide by. In other words, the client can't just send whatever it wants. The server knows ahead of time what it wants and it's going to just throw an error or not be happy if it's getting something that it doesn't want. And I think this idea is great and I think we should use that in JavaScript. And I actually do. So what I will do is that I will create a model and then I will declare a, that model to be, like, I mean, when I build my application, I, ex I, I use that data and that model as the source of truth for building my application. And then when, my server, like when the server response comes in, I simply grab the data that I need from the server and I put it in the shape of the model that I have created. That way there's a decoupling between my application code and the server. The server can change as much as it wants and the only, if something breaks, I have to simply make a change in one place instead of over my entire code base. Now, the problem comes when you have, like, if we just have a look at this little model that I created here. Now, one of the things that might, might be an issue is what I like to call, like, okay, how do you know what it is that you're, I mean, you can make assumptions and you can say that, all right, I expect the server to give me this information and then I will simply create a mapping layer as the thing that you're seeing here. We'll just I'll walk you through this in just a moment. But you see like you you pluck off all the things that you need from the server onto your model and then that's it. I like to take it one step further and actually add my own type checking to my JavaScript. And now I know what you're going to say. Why aren't you using TypeScript or Flow or something like that? And you would be absolutely right. If you, in a perfect world, you would use TypeScript or Flow or something like that. I think that you should if you have that option. But this is something that I just wanted to show you, which you can do if you don't have that option. TypeScript is a great thing. It's my personal favorite and Flow is on par with, with TypeScript. So if you can use those tools, it's great to have. Because types, guys, types are really, really useful when you want to have this more robust way of working. So imagine now for the sake of argument that we have a user model for our system. So something, that what I will do is that when the network request comes with all the data that's coming from the server, now that data can be in any shape. My system, my part, like the front end doesn't know what the server is going to send. I mean, if I just trust what the server is sending, I have to shape all of my application code in accordance to what the server is giving me. And that's not what I want. I want to have a clean, nice interface for, this, for the client side code that will work. And that's why I create this, this user model. So the, this data that is coming, that's the data that's coming from the server, right? And then I just pass that to my super. And my, I extend something I call inspectable, which is just, this is just me doing my, th my thing. So in uh, the inspect function on a JavaScript object is going to be the thing that you use when you do console.log or when you, when you log out something. So what I like to do is that I do this, which is basically that I return json.stringify this, in other words, the object that this is extend, it be, being extended by, 
and then I set the formatting to two. We'll see in just a moment how that, actually we can look at that now, I think, I, yeah, I already did this here. So you can see that the formatting of my output data becomes this nice, clean, little, easy thing that you can read, right? This is just my personal preference. But let's get on to it. So the first thing I do is that I type check my data, my like the incoming data that is coming from the server. So if this data is, I, it, I expect it to be an object, you, plain and simple. If it's something else, I'll simply return an empty object. And then I have this magic function that we're going to look at in just a moment, which I call type checker. So my type checker, I'm creating these different methods, right? These inter internal methods that are going to do help me out with just grabbing the data from the incoming uh, incoming information, right? So I declare here that get name should be like basically what is I expect get in the name of my function or rather the name of the property of the, 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 that I'm grabbing here. I should expect that to be of the type string. If it's not the type of string, I return an empty string and the field name is going to be name. Same thing here. My age, I expect that to be a number and if I don't find it, I just return zero and I, the field name is called age. And then I have this final thing here where I say, okay, I, get, I want to get the friends from this incoming data. I declare that to be a type of array. If I don't find it, it's going to be an empty array and the name of the field is just friends. So what I can do now is that I can grab the name with this little get name function here and then I can grab the age and then I can just grab like I can gra grab the friends and then I can map over all of the friends which are also supposed to be users and then I do the same thing for them. So I just extract that right and then I have this little thing that I call an address which is just going to grab the address. Now I'm not doing a type checker on the address because the address model is a separate thing. So let's look at that. So here I'm getting some data, I'm passing it to my super function and I do the same thing. I check that it's an object, then I use my type checker function to just make sure that if I get the street I expect that to be a string. If it's not a string or if I can't find this property I just return an empty string and the field name is called street and then I do the same thing for city and then I can extract that. So what's now happened is that I have created a situation where if the shape of the data that is like my models because when I now start writing my application code I use this interface. I only trust this interface. I don't care what the server is sending me. The server is responsible for sending me something that will fit into this model. If it doesn't do that I will have some fallbacks. And then I will also have, we will see that just in just a moment, I will have some way of alerting my, my system. I will either log out a warning or I will, call, I will send some error to my error tracking system or something like that to just communicate that, hey, server, you sent me something that I wasn't expecting. Did you like to just notify about that? But the application never breaks. So even if the server does something weird and sends some type of response that my application code isn't, like the front end code isn't expecting, the front end code is still going to keep on running because we have some reasonable defaults. So let's look at this magical type checker function. So this is just my way of doing this. I mean, you can do this, or ideally you should instead use something like TypeScript or Flow. So as we saw earlier, I get a type. In other words, what we saw earlier, this thing here. So these are the types that I expect. And then I get the default value and then the field name. And that's just a higher order function that returns a function that expects just to get the value right. So the first thing I do is that I check if I have declared the type to be array. And then I just check is if it's not an array, then yeah, I just log out a warning message and I return the default value. And then I check, all right, is it if the type is an array and it is actually an array, well, then I just return the value. Awesome. And then is it a type of object? Well, and it's actually an array. Well, then I have to say that, all right, I expected field name to be an object, but hey, I got an array. Now I'm do, I actually created, like just for the juniors out there, there is no type of array in JavaScript. JavaScript, an array in JavaScript is just an object. And that's why I invented my own type here, just so that I can express that, hey, I want an array and not an object because they're not the same thing. So this is just me doing doing some extra validation. This could have been an object as well, but I think this is a little bit more explicit because I don't want my code to, if, if the server was sending me an array and now it's sending me an object instead, that's going to break my application code. 
uh, where it can do that. So that's why I want to be very specific and say I want an array and not an object. And then we have this little thing here where I basically say that, all right, if the value is not the same thing as the type or the type of the value is not the same as the type and it is an array, then I basically say that, hey, I expected this to be of this type, but I got an array instead. And then finally I say, if the type of the value is not equal to the type that has been declared, I log out this def this warning and then I just return the default value. And if all of this passes, I simply return the value. In other words, it's the exact thing that I'm expecting. So all I've done now is to create this little, like this little trick in order to declare a type that I expect for a given property on my, my model so that when I have declared, I'm done declaring this model, whenever I instantiate a user, whenever the server is sending me something, I instant, I just pipe all the data that I'm getting from the server into this model and out comes a fully instantiated model that I can, I can now use and make some assumptions about in my application code. And if for any reason the server is sending me something that I'm not expecting, I will know about it. So if we look at my test function here, that's, this is exactly what's happening. I'm grabbing my user. Here I have some incoming, let's just imagine this is some server data and you see that's completely wrong. Like name is a number and age is an array and friends is well, whatever that is. And now I instantiate my user and then I log out the user. So if we look at the first line here, what's happening is exactly what we want. So I said, okay, I expected name to be a string, but I got a number. I expected age to be a number, but got but got, but got an array. I mean, you see, it's, it's cascades. This is the street in the city. This is the address down here. And now you see that the shape, the output shape, is just my default values. So my application code will still run. It will still work. It won't break the page for the user. And I will know that you server sent me something, hey, that I wasn't expecting. And if everything is in the correct shape, like this, we won't see any log output, and we will simply grab those values. Well, this is just something that I like to do. It helps me a lot with that notorious, hey, you try to access property something something of undefined. This is a very elegant way I've found to solve that problem and to be able to actually start working at the same time as your coworkers who might be doing the server. Because usually what happens is that, hey, you have to have a server model in order for you to be able to work on the front end code. But if you have this approach, you can actually start working at the same time because the client, as I said, if because I have already decided that this is the shape of the data that I need to do my job on the front end, I can actually, I don't actually have to wait for my coworkers on the server to create the models just yet. I can just declare a model and then I can use whatever's coming from the server to fit, the, fit it into this shape. And that makes it possible for you to start working immediately. I hope that you found this useful. Have a great day.